Hi, as I said before, as the story becomes much less relevant from Metal Slug 4, unlike in 1, 2, and 3, I will talk about the story by taking a step away from it. First of all, most of the people, including Wikipedia, say the story progresses in the order of 6475, but I personally believe 6457 makes more sense. First, Metal Slug 6 is a story that happens right after Metal Slug 3, where the regular army sinks Root Mars. The stupid regular army once again misses Morden. While looking for him, members of Morden's army gets caught in a mountain and the general staff immediately dispatches the agents. This time, Peregrine Falcons and Sparrows are joined by other allies. That is, the Ikari Warriors, Ralph Jones and Clark Stowe. This party of six members heads to Madagascar, where the mountain is located. As for the intel, Morden seemed to be collecting minerals by using the mining vehicle Bulldro to secure funds for the war. And as usual, the regular army destroys it. Next is Phuket. When they enter the island, defeating the enemy who seem to have joined forces with Morden, like the Arabian army during the second coup, out of the blue, Mars people appear. Bastards. After defeating them, they face the Iron Sentinel which was developed by Morden's army and Mars people. But Marco's team knocks it out. And then, Morden and Mars people come out of the Iron Sentinel and seize the protagonist by using a special gun, when a strange noise is heard. Before the scared Mars people and Morden, mysterious creatures appear and eat the Mars people alive. Morden falls on the ground with his pants taken off, begins to make excuses. Mars people who lost their king makes a deal to Morden. Having no dignity whatsoever, Morden accepts the proposition right away and lifts sunken root Mars up from under the sea. That's when the new alien invaders show up and swallow Mars people before they begin attacking humans. Having heard what happened, the regular army forms temporary alliance with both Morden's army and Mars people, and heads to China to confront the invaders. After arriving in China, which is already turned into ruins, they go down to the underground waterway where they face the Brain Robot, a new two-legged walking weapon, which they destroy after hard battle before proceeding to the next mission place. You see, the only forked road in Metal Slug 6 at what seems to be the Golden Gate Bridge, and the ending depends which way you choose here. Personally, I would follow the downward route, which seemed more refreshing. Told you it's refreshing, right? Here, Root Mars is turned into a slug, and flies around with the players on it. After you go on some time, the protagonist will be dropped at the place where you'll see the new alien's enormous sea worm, and they beat it. As they have been attacked so far, now it's time for counter-attack. The regular army boards the rebel army's hideout and gets off the invader's base. As they dig down deeper into the underground, finally the queen of all invaders appears inside an egg, and when the egg is broken, she hatches and goes out of control. And so we beat it up again. After the beating is done, the invader queen falls bottomlessly into the ground before eventually exploding. The protagonists who are barely hanging on the cliff almost fall off as well, but Rootmar shows up out of nowhere and rescues them, which is how Metal Slug 6 ends. A year later, now the world is under the threat of cyber terrorism. A terrorist organization named the Amadeus Syndicate announces they created a computer virus named the White Baby which can hack not only personal data, but also nuclear missile system and that they will soon utilize it. And a reliable source reports, a few hours later, Amadeus will attack a communication facility in a certain city. Subsequently, Tarma and Eri are ordered to protect the staff developing anti-white baby vaccine, while supporting Marco and Theo. Meanwhile, having decided Marco and Theo alone cannot destroy Amadeus, the regular army sends Trevor Spacey from Peregrine Falcon and Nadia Castle from Sparrows to join the battle. Trevor, a South Korean national, is a gifted programmer and an agent who joined the army immediately after becoming an adult. While Nadia used to want to become a model before she gained weight and then lost it through a military program. Fascinated by the military environment where she can eat as much as she wants without worrying about getting fat, she joins the army, however ridiculous that sounds. Anyway, after confirming the soldiers to send to the battle, the regular army receives a satellite image, which shocks the agents. Turns out, Morden was caught wearing the Amadeus symbol. So the fight against the new terrorist organization begins. First, the army knocks out of the Brave Garrier, Amadeus' military airship, which directly strikes the city first. After trekking back where the attack came from and passing the outskirt of the city, they climb up a mountainous land, when they face the Toshka Dalanu and Ellen O'Neill, and they are beat up again. 
Next mission is in a snowy mountain. The Morden's army and tanks show up, camouflaged in white to match the background. And of course, when there's Ellen, there's Morden. Morden appears riding the all round tank, the Iron, which once again gets crushed and he takes off quickly. Now, with the story having completely lost its direction, the regular army proceeds. Out of nowhere, they arrive at a theme park in Canada and fight some zombies and mummies. After defeating them, continue until you see the terrorist machine, Big John, which goes well with the whole stage. By the way, when you look at the zombification liquid shot from Big John and Amadeus army in protective clothing, it seems that the mummies and zombies were turned into weapons by the Amadeus syndicate by using the sample they obtained in Metal Slug 2 and 3. Anyway, let's speed them up and move on. Now to the underground base of the Amelia Syndicate, our final destination. But well, we see Donald Morden, who is now wearing the Amelia uniform, unabashed holding a bazooka. And it wasn't just a couple of them. In fact, they were all robot replicas of Morden created by the Syndicate. And if there is a robot Morden, we should expect a robot version of Alan O'Neill, who is superior power. Based on them, we can assume the Morden and Alan we have run into from the opening were all cloned robots. Anyway, they go down to the Amadeus Syndicate headquarters and meet the Amadeus leader, Dr. Manfred Amadeus. As you'd expect from the leader of a technically strong terrorist organization, Amadeus begins to attack the regular army with three types of robots before he was totally beat up. The peace, however, did not last. One day, a mysterious mask falls into a tropical forest from the sky. The natives discover it and one of them dares to put it on. And that's how he obtained the power of the devil. His name is Ptolemyus. Using this power, he creates an organization called the Ptolemaic Army. From then on, he worships this devil and destroys ruins before causing a huge event that will shake up the world. By the way, as many of you know, Metal Slug 5 proceeds from stage 3 to 1 and then to 5, within less than a year from Amidius's collapse. The regular army super vehicle lab is developing the next generation metal slug when the lab is attacked by someone who steals confidential information. This disc contained not only the metal slug blueprint, but also Peregrine Falcon's battle log and Morden's weapon data. And so Marco and Tarma are promptly ordered to reclaim it. Meanwhile, Ari and Theo from Sparrows were investigating the Ptolemaic army, which were destroying ruins around the world when they discover the base of the organization, the Corridor of Fire, and tries to take them down, but is stopped by an enormous metal slug and retreats. This incident leads them to identify Ptolemaic army as the culprit that stole metal slug's confidential info. Upon receiving intel that Ptolemaic army is currently based in some abandoned building, they begin the operation to suppress them. As planned, the agents move to the building and by using the info from the regular army, the Ptolemaic army creates new weapons that are powerful beyond expectations. However, using Slug Gunner, which was stolen during the attack and succeeds in bringing them down. Now the agents move toward the enemy's base, the Corridor of Fire. Through the forest, they enter the ruins when they face the Black Hound, which has been developed based on Metal Slug. And then coming out of the corridor, they encounter the ultra-large metal slug, the Metal Rear, which however they knock out without problem. The final mission begins on a highway in the middle of the city. As you can guess from the background, the city seems to have been destroyed by something that is 100 times larger than the buildings. And that must be the target of the regular army. When we follow the subway and arrive in the downtown which is on fire, the background suddenly turns into the interior of some machine. Actually, this part requires additional explanation. In fact, in Metal Slug 5, there are several bosses who were deleted. The Stone Turtle and Ptolemyus are some of them. The Stone Turtle is an ancient weapon discovered by the Ptolemaic army and was destroying the city during the early part of the stage. In other words, the Ptolemaic army has been tearing down the city and remains to excavate this weapon. And looking at the concept art of the Stone Turtle, Ptolemyus was supposed to be the final boss, standing here on the top. In other words, the Ptolemaic army succeeded in discovering the Stone Turtle, and when they began to attack the city, the regular army begins their journey to stop the Stone Turtle according to the original plot of the final mission. That's why the background turned into the inside of a machine, that is, the Stone Turtle. And the protagonist was supposed to climb up and meet Ptolemyus at the top. But this was also deleted, so we face so-called the evil spirit incarnate instead. And as always, the enemy is knocked out and the world finds itself a peaceful state again. Now finally, it's Metal Slug 7. The plot of 7 begins with Morden, who they yet again fail to catch, organizing an army as usual. 
And after accidentally spotting Morden Soldier in the Scrap Island, the regular army begins infiltration, which is a total cliché. Once again, the Ikari team joins the operation, and so does our Leona Hyder. As soon as the mission begins, the regular army ambushes the Scrap Island, and Morden tries to defend by using the warm mecha, but it just ends blowing up easily. And after the agents leave, Morden comes out with the explosion. Perhaps as a result of the explosion, suddenly a dimensional portal opens up before Morden, and the future Morden army shows up through the door to help him out. Meanwhile, the regular army, which didn't even know Morden was riding the war mecha, moves into the scrap island again. There they beat up Kraplops, before knocking down the robot climbing up the wall near the waterfall, and then the union inside the ruins. And when they step out to the snow outside, the future Morden army begins tackling the regular army, who, by chance, they obtain an enormous vehicle, the Slug Gigant, which was covered in snow. Just when they found themselves on the gigantic robot, we see the Morden army and Ellen O'Neill, no less, who are also riding the Rebel Gigant. Anyway, since we need to move on, they somehow end up defeating him, and manage to get inside Morden's base where they finally discover the dimensional gate and blow it up. However, just before the gate is about to explode, something appears from inside the door and flies away with Morden. The regular army chases after them to the melting furnace outside, and that's when the final battle with the Kraken, the ultimate weapon from the future, begins. The future weapon attacks with its powerful tentacles, which do not melt even in lava, but ends up getting all of its arms cut off and sinking into the lava. Oh, I forgot something important. Morden, who was controlling the Kraken, eventually comes out, and then before the lava swallows the Kraken, Romi Aikawa shows up and saves the agents and even Morden. But well, the stupid regular army loses Morden yet again, and out of nowhere, Mars people appear and take him away. In conclusion, the greedy SNK is planning to release another sequel.